In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. In popular culture, there remains the impression that science and religion are at odds. Personally, as a STEM graduate and the son of two professional scientists, I think the issues are massively exaggerated. In fact, most of the people I know with science PhDs, I know through various churches I've attended. But the media love a conflict. And there are some people on both sides of the fence who like to promote the idea that science and faith are irreconcilable. Many of the supposed issues centre on the account of creation given in Genesis. But that's not the only creation story in the Bible. We've heard another one today, and it's equally true, although perhaps it focuses on different truths about creation. We heard today that in the beginning, before there was anything else, there was the word, communication, reason. These things are not just an invention of some advanced apes, but they are intrinsic to reality. And through the word, all things were made. And so we find ourselves in a universe that reflects him, a reasonable universe governed by consistent laws, which we're able to grasp by human reason. But reason in the laws of nature is not the end of the story, because the word of God is not just a distant, impersonal principle, shining light on humanity through the beauty of mathematics. No, the essence of God is not just reason, but also relationship. John, who wrote the passage we heard today, also writes elsewhere that God is love. And in his love, he reaches out to us. He came down to our level. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. To my mind, this is the premier miracle in the whole of scripture. And it's beautifully described here in my favorite passage in the whole of scripture. Because if God is real, you'd expect him to be able to part seas, feed the hungry, raise the dead. But to belittle himself like this, to stoop down and limit himself, to make himself dependent on father and mother, to make himself vulnerable to tyrants like Herod. That is truly incredible, I think. What could motivate him to do that? Well, the answer, of course, comes again from God's very essence. God is love. Love motivated him to reach out to us by becoming one of us. 
the Word, the Son, came to offer reconciliation. He came to call people who are estranged from God back into relationship. He came to offer us the right to return to God as his children. He came to offer us grace and truth. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. I wonder what you will do with his offer today.